welcome to this module and this is our last module for this particular lecture. In the last series of modules what we have seen? We have seen a chip that is integrated with a heater over which there is an insulator over which there are interdigitated electrodes on which there was piezoresistive sensors or sensing layers on there there was an insulator over which there was a goal pad. Now on this goal pad we will be patterning SU8 pillars. So, the role of this SU8 pillars would be to transmit a force that will be applying to the tissue through the indenter. Right. But before we reach to that particular point, let us see how we can pattern the SU8 pillar. So, if you see the screen, what you see is that this particular chip it has SU8 pillars, right. We have seen until goal pad. Now, how to create those pillars 1, 2, 3, 4? How to create these pillars? To create these pillars, we will be using a technique which you already know known as photolithography photolithography ok. And what I want is these pillars, these pillars I said it is SU8 because these pillars are made up of SU8 or pattern using SU8 they are non conducting why because SU8 is a polymer is a non conductive polymer. Now, we will say how come polymer is conductive and non conductive polymer can be conductive for example, we have used P dot P S S P dot P S S this is a conductive polymer, but S U 8 is a non conductive polymer or an insulator. However, I want this pillars to be the part of the gold pad. I want this four pillars to be part of the goal pad. So, when I apply a voltage between this the current should flow from the pillars to the tissue which is placed on the pillars to the another electrode you will see how that happens. So, to make SU8 conductive what we can do? We can coat SU8 pillars with a metal we can coat SU8 pillars with a metal. So, how to coat SU8 pillars with metal either you can use standard photolithography or you can use a technique called as lift off either use a standard photolithography or a technique called lift off alright. So, you see here in this particular chip what you see is there are goal pads there is a, there is a goal pad and there are SU8 pillars which are coated with gold you can see there is a gold over SU8 pillar right. Same thing we want same thing we want at the end of our process flow. So, if I if I draw quickly what we have until now what we have until now is a oxidized silicon wafer. on which there is a micro heater right on which there is an insulator on the insulator. Now, this is just a contact pad there are interdigitated electrodes. right and on this interdigital electrodes there is a sensing layer which is our piezoresistor sensor. On this piezoresistor sensor there is an insulator 
on this insulator there is a gold pad. So, let me draw gold pad like this. Hmm. So, what is this? SiO2, SiO2, this is your micro heater. this is SiO2 interdigitated electrodes piezo resistive piezo resistive sensing layer SiO2 gold pad right this is what we have seen. Now, on this particular material on this particular chip what we have to do we have to. So, I will draw it here or let me draw it here that is easy. So, assume that assume that all the layers that we have drawn over here all the layers are there and I am just drawing the gold pad. Okay? I am just drawing gold pad. So, below this gold pad this remaining layers are there which layer from silicon dioxide piezo resistor interdigital electrodes in SiO2 micro heater and below it there is an oxide. So, I will just draw a line here below which there is an oxide okay? just to make it easier just to make it easier. So, this particular schematic or part of the schematic represents all these five layers which is your silicon dioxide and your piezo resistor and your interdigital electrodes and your SiO2 and your micro heater. Okay. Now, this is our gold pad we know that right this is our gold pad. On this gold pad I will spin coat I will spin coat SU8 like spin coating photo resist we will spin coat SU8 okay? this is gold pad. Just to make it easier I am just filling this uh, block. So, that it is easier to identify difference between your gold pad and SU8. Okay? Now, SU8 SU8 is negative photo resist SU8 is a negative photo resist. So, we all know which kind of mask we have to use so that we can save the area below which or save the area uh, or we can save the SU8 on the area that we want to have pillars for right. So, which kind of mask we can use if I use a bright fill mask if I use a bright fill mask and the pillars are or the area that is dark filled in a bright fill mask the area that are patterns will it work with SU8 or should I use a dark fill mask where the light can penetrate only in the area where I want to protect my SU8 you get it. So, let us see this if I draw if I draw a mask which has four pillars like this and rest of the area is dark filled rest of the area is dark filled is this mask a better mask this is my
dark field mask hmm? dark field. So, if I use dark field mask to form SU8 pillar does it make sense because SU8 is a negative photoresist SU8 is a negative photoresist. So, if I use this mask which is dark field assume that this lines that we have drawn here this everything is dark okay, and only in the area where you can see the circles it is brighter. Now, what is the characteristics of SU8 or negative photoresist that the light or the area that is exposed the area which is exposed will become stronger the area which is not exposed with UV light will become weaker we know right. So, negative photoresist the area which is exposed with UV will become stronger will become stronger and in positive photoresist positive for this the area which is exposed with UV will become weaker will become weaker. So, we have to use dark field mask with SU8 to form the pillars right. Now, so after spin coating SU8 there is a data sheet that you need to follow how to use SU8 as a negative photoresist. In case of positive and negative photoresist what we have this uh, we what we have learned until now is that the first step is after spin coating you have to do a soft baking soft bake followed by UV exposure. So, alignment mask alignment followed by UV exposure followed by PR development PR develop followed by post bake or hard bake right hard bake hard bake and so on. This is what we have learned until now for positive and negative photoresist right. In case of SU8, SU8 is similar to negative for this photoresist, but the process step is little bit different. So, what is the process step? After SU8, we coat, we coat the SU8 on this chip we first go for soft bake which is done at 65 degrees centigrade followed by followed by UV exposure followed by hard bake followed by photoresist developer what I said after SU8 which is our negative photoresist soft base at 65 degree this this temperature is given in the data sheet for how much time you have to uh, soft bake is also given depending on the thickness of SU8. So, when you when you look at the data sheet of SU8 you will see uh, the temperature the thickness the uh, soft bake time the hard bake time and same stands uh, same stands true uh, for uh, soft for negative and positive photoresist as well. So, when you look at the data sheet you will know these numbers, but the one thing that is different than positive and negative photoresist compared to SU8 is that here after soft baking at UV exposure we are going for hard baking instead of photoresist developer this one step you have to remember alright. So, that is only different here you see there is a photoresist developing and then hard bake here it is hard bake and then photoresist developer. So, uh, that thing is one thing that you guys have to remember in case of SU8. So, I will use SU8 with my dark field mask I will use SU8 with my dark field mask you are you now know why dark field. So, after SU8 what we will do we will perform soft bake we will go for soft bake then we will go for UV exposure we go for UV exposure followed by followed by hard bake 
UV exposure followed by hard bake. followed by PR developer. Okay. So, if I perform this step soft bake then I use here UV exposure when I say UV exposure it is understood that there is a mask that we will load and that we will align and then followed by a UV exposure next step would be hard bake next step would be PR developer. When we perform all these steps when we perform all these steps what we get we get when you perform all these steps we get uh, you you look at this particular diagram okay what we get is or because two pillars are on the back side assuming the two pillars on the back side cross section we get su8 in this particular fashion why because we are taking a cross section of this Right. So, that is why we are representing only two pillars, two pillars are on the back side of these pillars. You got it? So, this is just a negative photo resist. After this, you have to go for annealing this particular chip at a higher temperature, so, let us say at 130 degree centigrade or 140 degree centigrade. We have to anneal the chip at higher temperature to make the SU8 harder, to make the SU8 harder. You got it? So, this is how we pattern the SU8 on the chrome gold pad. Things to remember is SU8 is a negative photoresist and compared to the positive and negative photoresist the only difference is that instead of going for uh, PR developer after UV exposure we have to go for hard bake followed by PR developer. Right. So, after we learn this what we will learn now how we can coat the SU8 with metal, how we can coat the SU8 with metal right. So, we will see how we can coat the SU8 with metal in the uh, next module or uh, actually let, let us finish in this module because uh, uh, I want to teach you something in the next module. So, in this in this particular thing uh, what we what we have done until now is we have created SU8 pillar. So, now let us see what is the step that we will do so to make the SU8 conductive all right. So, if you see the screen what we have is SU8 pillar in this particular fashion. Now, there are two ways two ways okay. one is one is I am just drawing a chip so that you it becomes easier just concentrate on these two figures right and let us directly draw SU8 pillars here there are other layers below it other layers below it. Okay. We will start with SU8 pillar. On this SU8 pillar I deposit chrome gold, I deposit chrome gold right and make it conductive and make it conductive. But if I do this, if I do this right I have to perform a photolithography standard photolithography to pattern the chrome gold in a way that it should only coat, it should only coat SU8 like this correct and remaining area I do not want to coat it uh, with any other metal. But if I deposit chrome gold and if I perform standard photolithography and I want to protect only in this area then below these pillars what was that below this pillar there is a gold pad right below this pillar there is a gold pad you are with me right we are this is exactly this figure this figure hmm? and below this there is another layers. So, if you compare this one what we have done is we have to we have to coat the SU8 pillars without coating this particular area otherwise everything will be shorted out everything will be short right. So, if I perform a standard photolithography what will happen is the gold in this region will also get etched, the gold in this region will also get etched. So, what will happen is it will look like this you see in this case it will look like this, but this is not what we want, we want a single gold pad below 
SU8 pillars, right? Because see, chrome gold we are depositing, which is here. There is a chrome gold below it, which is like here, like. And then, if I perform central photolithography, and if I just want to coat the SU8 pillars, then this region will get etched. So, in that case, what I can do? I can perform soft, not soft lithography. I can perform lift off technique. What is called? lift off technique. Hmm. So, let us see how lift off technique can be done lift off technique. So, I am only drawing I am only drawing SU8 pillar and gold pad right and you guys have to assuming uh, you, are, you guys have to assume that there are other layers below the gold pad there are other layers below the gold pad. So, let us see all right, right. So, this is the starting wafer where these are this is your SU8 pillar. In case of lift off what we will do is we will coat this SU8 pillar and every area of the wafer with a photoresist. So, we will spin coat positive photoresist will spin code positive photoresist. This photoresist is thicker compared to our earlier positive photoresist. The idea of keeping this photoresist thicker is that here we want to uh, use a lift off technique. So, for lift off technique we have to use a photoresist which is thicker compared to uh, 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 normal lithography techniques or standard lithography techniques. So, once I spin code photoresist, what is the next step? Next step is my next step is I will pre bake the wafer at 90 degree centigrade, right. Next step is I will load the mask, I will load mask, and this time, this time I want to open only the area which I want to make it conductive, that means the area which is surrounding SU8 pillar. So, what does that mean? That I will have a mask, I will have a mask that will be a dark field mask, that will be a dark field mask with only area, the circular area you can see here, right, that is bright field that is uh, pattern. So, only the circle through the circle only light can pass. Now, why this? Why we have, why I have to do this? So, you see here if I load the mask, if I load the mask right such that I am loading the mask such that the photoresist is protected only in the area which you can see right over here which is dark red and in this area photoresist should not be there. Hmm. So, I will have a mask which looks like this, this can be my dark fill mask, dark fill mask. Okay. Now, what I will do? I will go for soft lithography uh, sorry after this after this we will perform we will perform UV exposure or we go for UV exposure UV exposure. All right. So, after UV exposure, what is the next step? Next step is photoresist developer, right. So, when I will develop my photoresist after performing this step, what will I have? I will have SU8 pillar, right, and everywhere there will be photoresist. So, I am just drawing photoresist 
to save time in this fashion. This is gold pad, this dotted version is a gold pad and this is a SUA pillar right. So, this is my photo resist right? because we have used you we have used dark field mask the positive photo resist. So, area which is not exposed area which is not exposed will be stronger area which is not exposed will be stronger. Now, you see here that what is there there are SU8 pillars there is a positive photo resist and here is a gold pad and below there are other layers. So, the next step is I will I will deposit chrome gold on this particular chip this is my chrome gold see this is chrome gold. Hmm? Now, see the beauty of lift off after depositing chrome gold I will put this chip I will put this wafer in I load this wafer or dip this wafer in acetone right. So, I live I will dip this wafer in acetone what will happen is acetone will lift off the photo resist acetone will strip the photo resist right you know acetone is a photo resist stripper it will strip photo resist when it strips photo resist the metal on the photo resist will also get stripped when acetone strips photo resist the metal on the photo resist will also come off right and what we will see is a wafer a wafer with a gold pad su8 pillar and su8 pillar coated with coated with chrome gold why because see photo resist from this area from this area will be and from this area right this 3 1 2 3 all 3 area will be stripped off and the metal on the photo resist will be lift off. So, we lift off the metal on the photo resist and thus we get SU8 pillars you can see right over here SU8 pillars and on SU8 pillars there is a chrome gold or a metal right. This is how we perform lift off here there is no tension of performing uh, the whole steps uh, for standard lithography that is you spin coat then you load the mask then you uh, spin coat then soft bake then load the mask then uh, developer develop the photo resist then you go for a hard bake and then perform uh, uh, chrome gold etchant right and then finally go for photo resist stripping off here the idea is that you spin coat photo resist you pattern the photo resist and you deposit chrome gold and you dip the wafer in acetone. So, the life becomes extremely easy because acetone is a stripper it will lift off the metal on it and thus we di directly get SU8 pillars that are coated with metal right. So, if I do this kind of stuff what will I have I will have a chip that is ready uh, with SU8 pillars uh, that are conductive because uh, there is a metal coated on the SU8. Now, one thing that we have to remember in this particular application if you remember the uh, uh, lithography and the physical vapor deposition in particular thermal evaporation or E beam um, uh, if you use thermal evaporation or E beam what will happen there is a there is a cons of E beam there is a drawback or limitations of E beam or, or uh, thermal evaporation what is that there is a it cannot or it has a poor step coverage. So, if this is my SU8 pillar and if I am depositing a metal right if I am depositing metal it will not cover this area or maybe it will not cover this area this is my gold pad right this is my gold pad this is my SU8 pillar and if I am depositing metal it may not cover this area because of the poor step coverage 
poor step coverage in the case of in the case of thermal evaporation or EV evaporation. So, but if I tilt this wafer right, if I have wafer like this, if I tilt the wafer, what will happen? It will deposit on this particular area, right? You see, this particular area will also get coated along with the tip. So, now if I tilt the wafer, I will have one side coating of SU8 pillar, this is gold pad. So, this becomes conductive, the path is conductive path from tip to the gold pad. If I use like this, there are chances that the step here the steps here would not be covered. Say so, SU8 pillars, if there are 4 SU8 pillars, they may not get covered uniformly and that is why the idea is that we should at least have a conductive layer, layer uh, from the tip to the pad and that we can do by just tilting the wafer in one of the direction either in this direction or that direction you can use 50 de 45 degree uh, uh, if this is if you consider this one uh, as a flat you just uh, put an angle and at that angle you can cover at least one side of the SU8 pillar. So, if you see the chip how the chip will look like now the chip will look like the one shown in figure over here. Right, and this chip has what? This chip consists of now it consists of a electrode, a gold electrode with SU8 pillars that are conductive. This is a gold electrode, correct? And what it ha uh, has? It is also integrated with microheater. It is also integrated with piezoresistive material. Right. So in that case, what we will do? we will see how this chip can be used to understand the properties of tissue. So, since this chip has a heater, if I use a 3D printed case as shown here 3D printer 3D printer. Okay if I use a 3D printer to create a case which is shown right over here and if I am using a chip which is integrated with a heater, you can see this funnel right. If I place the tissue in this funnel, this tissue like this, this tissue will be placed or will be touching the chip, center of the chip. Now, I have a indenter you can see here. I have a indenter and there is a thermistor on the indenter. So, if I heat the tissue from the bottom, I can measure the temperature of the tissue at the top, right. So, I have a temperature T2 here, temperature T1 here. If I know the dif difference between T1 and T2, I can measure thermal conductivity, thermal conductivity of tissue, right. One thing. Now, we know that there is a electrode, which electrode? Electrode that consists of a gold pad along with SU8 pillars which are conductive. So, we say this electrode number 1, electrode which is a, a consists of a gold pad and SU8 pillars which are conductive. If you see the indenter that we will press it right, we have to press the tissue. You see the indenter here, indenter has another electrode, indenter has another electrode. Let us give this electrode as number 2, name as number 2. So, we have electrode 1 on chip, electrode 2 on the indenter. Now, if I apply, if I apply voltage between this electrode and the top electrode, that means electrode 2 and electrode 1 what will happen correspond corresponds to the re, uh, resistance of the tissue or corresponding to the resistance of tissue the current flowing through the tissue would be different right see i am applying voltage across this terminal so i will apply a voltage across tissue in this particular fashion corresponding to the resistance of the tissue i will be able to see change in current. right? So, now I can measure the electrical property of tissue, 
electrical properties of tissue. Next, next, we know that the sensor or the chip consists of piezo resistive sensing materials, right? It consists of piezo resistive sensing materials. So, if I have an indenter and if I press the tissue, then the piezo resistor on the chip will will have or will experience certain amount of force depending on my indentation, how much I am indenting the tissue. And that force transmitted from the indenter to the chip depends on the elasticity of the tissue, is not it? Elasticity of the tissue. Again, there is an indenter, we are indenting the tissue with some micro Newton to milli Newton of force. How much force will be transmitted on the chip depends on the elasticity of the tissue. Now, the amount of force that is transmitted on the chip can be measured if the if the chip is integrated with some sensor and our chip is already integrated with a piezo resistive sensor. But there is a catch here. Until now, what we have seen? If you see this slide, we have seen that we have everything below SU8 pillar, like interdigitated electrodes, uh, sensing layer, and microheater, everything. But if I uh, let's say uh, if I draw a, a piezoresistive uh, sensor, let's say this is a piezoresistive material, okay? PZR, piezoresistor. Hmm? If I apply force, if I apply force what will happen? This sensing layer should feel some force, that force how much force it feels depends on the elasticity of the tissue, but this piezo resistance sensor will not be sensitive because we are using silicon chip and silicon is hard material. So, there will be no strain in piezo resistor, there, there, there will be no amount uh, you know sensitivity of piezo resistor will be extremely, extremely small. So, how to improve the sensitivity? We can improve the sensitivity if I create a diaphragm, if I create a diaphragm. In this case, when I apply a force, when I apply a force right to the tissue with the help of indenter, I will be looking at the change in the elasticity the change in the elasticity of tissue based on how much force is transmitted onto the chip that is indicated with my piezo resistive sensor. That means, that it is an indenter if I indent this on the tissue right and if I know that there is let us say 10 milli Newton of force that I am applying on the top, how much force is there on the chip depends on my resistance of the sensor this when I apply force this will bend and this bending will cause change in resistance and this resistance corresponds to the elasticity of tissue. Got it? So, now what we can do? We can measure the electrical, mechanical and thermal property of tissue that is what we have written here electrothermomechanical phenotyping of breast cancer because the tissue that we can try is a breast cancer tissue that does not stop you to use any other tissue. You see you can use any tissue related uh, cancer and you can try with this chip to see whether the tissue has uh, uh, as the cancer progresses or the, as the disease progresses uh, are the parameters or property of tissue different. Is the mechanical property of tissue different that is elasticity is different or is the resistance is different or thermal conductivity is different. So, this is not limited to just breast cancer, it can be used for oral cancer, can be used for liver, can be used for any tissue related cancer, you got it. So, this kind of chip we can use to understand the electrical, thermal and mechanical property of tissue. Now, you know that after looking at several modules, we are able to understand what is the process flow for developing a biochip that can be used for measuring the ETM properties of tissue, right. So, uh, uh, just to uh, uh, help you out how it should look like. So, what is the next step? Now, this everything is using the piezo actuator this and that, but can we de design a device that is small like a pen? and it has everything. 
how can you squeeze it down right how about I, I hold the device on my palm and I can just put a tissue and so when I am saying it should be holded on the palm does not mean it can be always holded on the palm that I mean is that what I mean is is that the size of the uh, device should be very small portable right. See once you understand that the tissue properties we can measure now let us try to understand how we can reduce the cost. Not everything is important in microengineering or MAMS devices or devices for clinical research that the cost should be down. One thing is a performance, sensitivity, accuracy, resolution and then everything is figured out. Now can we bring the cost down? This is our research approach should be. Right. So, you see the slide this is how it should look like this is what I think that okay, can we bring it to a palm size device. This is a indenter you can see very clearly this one is a indenter and this indenter uh, you can see here is uh, you know attached with a gold pad it has an electrode and then this is the 3D printed device on which there is a chip and it is a palm size device uh, a handheld small device. Now, in this particular application does not require uh, this device to be handled the idea of showing you this schematic is only to make sure that the device that we are designing uh, should be small enough for portability point of view. Now, always like I said it is not always that we have to go for it, but it is better to have a smaller device you see we have a phone which was really long or right cell phone we are bringing down bringing down bringing down. So, we are making a small chips we are, we are making things down easy, easy accessibility, easy portability and better operation. Right. So, uh, uh, this is the end of this particular module and what we saw in this whole lecture which is divided into several modules is that we learn a process flow to create a chip that is integrated with three different sensors and the idea is to understand the ETM properties that is electrical, thermal and mechanical properties of tissue and the bigger idea is that we with this particular modalities that is electrical, thermal and, and mechanical modalities along with MRI and mammography right can we help can we aid the clinician or a path lab to take a decision right can we help or aid the cl uh, clinician or a path lab to take a decision uh, to reduce false positive and false negative signals uh, uh, in case of cancer that is our bigger goal all right. So, uh, uh, we will continue uh, in the next lecture and we'll look at other kind of application of the uh, sensor uh, and how these sensors can be used to solve a very important problem in clinical perspective or from the clinical perspective. Till then you take care I will see you in next lecture.